All right, well, thank you all for coming to my talk. Uh, we're going to be talking about the uh, user experience of real-time site personalization. And I made up that title myself so that everybody feels comfortable coming here and not knowing what they're getting into. Um, uh, before I start, I helped organize the uh, WordCamp Providence meetup uh, just two months ago. And I know what goes into that and how, uh, how much time and energy it takes to put on one of these events. So, uh, one of the things that we didn't get to do this morning was thank the organizers. So if we could have a round of applause for Eric. And, uh, and, uh, and everybody else, they did an amazing job. Um, and of course, Microsoft's building here is amazing, right? The cool technology we stumbled on. You guys know there's an Xbox in that room, right? So if I get boring, you guys can go ahead in there and play some guitar here. Or something. Um, but one of my issues and I love coming up here, and I am a co-organizer of the, uh, the meetup here. Um, but one of the issues I have is driving into Boston. And uh, today we're going to be talking about user experience. And one of the experiences that I have here in Boston is um, coming across roads that look a lot more like this than where I grew up, which is in New York, and then later Cape Cod, where you, know, you have a four-way intersection. You, know, you need to go left, right, or straight. But uh, I come to an intersection like this, and I'm coming in this way, and my GPS tells me that in 300 feet, I need to bear left. <laughs> I'm looking at this, I'm looking down the road, and I'm like, crap. <laughs> so left could be here, left could be there, left could be there, or left could be here because you can kind of see that like it kind of bears the left that way. And now I'm like, oh, I'm not going to look down at my GPS because I can run into these guys, because they're <laughs> everywhere. And I don't text and drive, so I don't look down at my phone and drive, so I make a choice. And the thing I know about Boston is that any choice I make, I'm completely screwed. So, um, I, I make a choice, it doesn't matter which one, and what it turns out is that the GPS meant for me to go that way. <laughs> and I just say, screw it, I'm taking the train next time, and that's what I do. And I love the train because it's basically, it's a, it's a one-stop shop, right? Like you just know you're going along, you know where you need to stop, and then if you had to make a train uh, change, you know you're going to the next place. And, and it's just, like you don't have a choice, right? Like it's either you get off at the wrong stop or you don't, but it's not like you have to decide if the train's gonna take track two or track six or track nine or whatever. And uh, that's a little bit about what we wanna talk about today, which is that we want to create experiences for people where they're not presented with so many choices that they don't know what they're doing and, and where they're going and whether or not they're going to make the incorrect decision. Instead, we want to focus on whether or not we're making uh, experiences where people don't have to think, right? It just comes across. It just comes to them. So, did you see that little effect there? <laughs> so, this is a little bit of a new thing that we're kind of coming across, right? And I, I wanted to have that shiny bling but that's the best I could get, so I'll do it again. There we go. So we're, the idea of real-time site personalization is somewhat new in the, in the fact that, you know, the internet is still technically somewhat new, right? In the fact that it hasn't been around for centuries, it's been around for decades. And, and now, you know, we're kind of stumbling upon this, and people are doing this, and we're, we've been doing this for a long time. A great example is uh, Google, right? So sometimes Google just gives you what you want even though you didn't expect to have it, right? Like if uh, who's a sports fan of any kind in here, I am, okay. So you're on the subway, you're walking around, you don't get to actually see your game, you're not watching it, but you want to check on the score of the Boston Red Sox, right? You type into Google, Boston Red Sox score, Google gave up on trying to give you the correct result because the result is that you see 50 different websites that load 100 different things, and all you want is the score, right? And it takes you an hour to drill down and get that score on your phone. So instead, Google said, screw it. I'm just going to put it right at the top. Here's the live, real-time score. And they started doing that a while ago. And they're doing a really great job. Um, but we need to start doing that on our own sites and start taking advantage of that. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Jesse Friedman. I currently am the director of web and interface development at a company called Astonish. The cool thing about Astonish is that we are a very niche company. We uh, service the insurance industry. So that means we go up against uh, 
Geico lizards and um, cute women in aprons and other weird uh, you know, characters. But there's billions of dollars thrown in advertising against every one of our clients. But the cool thing is, is that I have a network of 600 websites and 600 clients where I get to test their data and understand what it is that they're doing. And they're all basically doing the same thing. Which makes my life easy because then I can really build cool things. And as of this year, we're 100% powered by WordPress, which is awesome because uh, we had uh, another proprietary .NET closed source uh, system uh, that we were using and I came on board to move it over. So I'm very proud to be uh, powering that system with WordPress now. Uh, I teach at University of Rhode Island and at uh, Johnson & Wales in Providence. Um, I'm also an author. I wrote the Web Designer's Guide to WordPress. So if you guys want to grab that, uh, it's a good book to help you transition your HTML and CSS skills into uh, building WordPress themes. One of the things I love to do is connect with everybody after these talks, so if you want to get with me on Twitter, that is my real handle, and I will be happy to tell you how I got it over a beer if you want to do that later tonight. Uh, you can get me on Facebook, even though I hate Facebook. We'll talk about that too. Um, I have a newsletter, and then my website, which is obviously powered by WordPress, is uh, Jesse with a little dot. Okay, so the first thing I want to do today is show you guys a video. Earlier this year, I had the pleasure of speaking at South by Southwest, and when I was there, I got to see Jason Silva talk. Does anybody know Jason Silva? Like, not know, know him, but know of him. He runs a, or he, he uh, has a, a, a show on, I think it's the National Geographic Channel. Um, and it, it, the whole idea of the show is just about like tricking the brain and understanding the brain and everything else. And one of his ideas is that he, uh, and he also creates these videos on, um, on Vimeo, and this is from a TED talk he did. And uh, he loves the idea of this radical openness, which I kind of like translate to like open source ideas. I'm going to play this real quick. Now this is like, if you guys weren't awake, if you didn't have your caffeine, I mean, everybody's in a food coma right now, so this is going to wake you guys up a little bit. Um, so let's just give this a watch. You know, I love this idea of radical openness, free exchange of information, free flow of ideas, creating spaces in which ideas can have sex, as Matt Ridley talks about. And this is huge, because it turns out that ideas are just as real as the neurons they... Uh. I had buffered this previously, and if you saw it, it just refreshed itself. Sorry about that. Well, maybe we can come back to it. But I don't want to take up the time. But he, he, he just touched on one thing there, where ideas can have sex, right? And that's so cool, because that, I mean, that's cool. But, um, <laughs> the idea is this, is that like, if I come into a room like this, and I give you guys an idea, it's now infectable, right? It's like a virus. It's something that you can take with you and move on and take into the world and, and build on it. One of the problems that we have is that we have like professional courtesy, right? Like I don't want to share an idea with you and then have you steal it and go make gobs of money off of it and me lose that idea and me lose that profit, right? And then there's the fact that like you just don't want to build something off of somebody else's idea. But the reality of the situation is I'd rather see that. I have hundreds of ideas, thousands of ideas. I'm never going to get to all of them. I might keep a couple close to my desk, but for the most part, I want to share those ideas, and that's really what this talk is about. I started doing talks like this, um, you know, last year, and really the, the thing for me was just if I have something that I think might work, the best thing I can do is share it with you guys and see if it actually does work. And you know, to me, it's not about taking credit for it; it's about whether or not we can help change and shift this industry. And that's what WordPress is all about, right? Like the idea of being open source and that we can all use it to build on it and grow it. Um, and it looks like we're not going to buffer. So we'll forget that one. We'll come back. Um, but that's that's really what the talk is about. And if you have an opportunity to see this on Vimeo, you should do that. It's a fantastic talk. Um, but like I said, open source ideas. So the idea here is that I'm going to share some ideas with you guys. I am not going to go through specific lines of code, I'm not going to go through development processes or workflows. I'm just going to share some ideas about things that I would like to see and how I think the internet should be working. And, uh, and then we'll see where it goes. And if you guys build on that and you do something with it, just let me know because I would love to share it. So the first thing I want you guys to do is close your eyes. Wow, you guys all listen. And usually that never happens. Okay. Just picture yourself going to your favorite store. 
and you're going to purchase your, you know, something that you really wanted for a long time. It doesn't matter what it is. And you're, you're going to go find it in the store somewhere. And then you grab it, it might be on a shelf, it might be on a hanger, and then you take it to the register. Now your register could be one of a million different ways, right? It could be something like at Macy's where they have these um, covert registers hidden within the, the department store and you don't know where to go. It could be like Old Navy where you know exactly where to go but you wait in line. It could be more like Stop and Shop where you have individual aisles, right? But the point is, is that every single person in this room is thinking of something different right now and probably thinking about their preferred experience. So you can open your eyes now. The point that I'm making is that if we can do that for websites, then we're doing our job, right? The goal, the goal should be that we're catering to our individual users' needs rather than trying to make something work because it has to be functional and dependent on technology. And this idea of technology, uh, or rather being technology agnostic, is so important to me. Because I think that it's really vital that we start thinking about how we want to shape and change our industry and not worry about how we're going to get it done. Not yet, anyways. Let's worry about what we want to do and what user experience we can create for our users, then worry about how we're going to get it done. So this all started uh, with me getting really frustrated with non-user initiated downloads. This is something to me that frustrated the heck out of me when response was really becoming popular. And uh, you know, Ethan gave a fantastic talk this morning. And you know, for me, it was like, let's say I run a blog and I wanted to post today the 10 coolest WordPress infographics on my blog post. And my blog is formatted to pull in um, the full article on the home page. Not an excerpt, but the full article. Now, I might have some frequent readers who come to my site, might come to my site on a mobile device, maybe they're on a bus or something like that. Now, all of a sudden, they're downloading 10 infographics. They're like, screw this. Like, I'm out of here, right? And that's pretty much what we do. If we don't like the experience that we, we're getting on a website, we, we leave, right? We have a million other options, millions of other options. So I gave a talk last year working at Boston on this, and um, I created a plugin around it called uh, WP Mobile Detect. And what it does is it makes it very easy for users, uh, especially people who don't have experience writing HTML or JavaScript, to um, swap content based off of the user's preferred device. Now, it sounds like, um, to some people who love mobile first only kind of uh, uh, workflows, then I'm kind of uh, going around that and, and segregating that out and not using that, that practice. But the thing we have to remember is that there's something like 80 million WordPress websites and what percentage of those people actually have experience writing code to detect browser capabilities and swap out internet graphics. Not a lot. So my plugin uses short code to do that. And what I started to find was is that we can actually start to shape the experience for those individuals uh, using their devices. So instead of showing uh, the 10 infographics, what we would pull in are 10 thumbnails. And then that user has the choice that they can make to download and view that infographic that they want to on the phone. And that choice is what really kind of opened up this idea for me about real-time site personalization because it it was customizing the experience for that person, but still presenting the same exact type of content. And so I extrapolate that out and we take it on to where I work now, which is Astonish. And uh, we have Astonish and then we have our users, which are our clients. They use our CRM tool that we built. Uh, it's proprietary. But then we have uh, website services that we provide to them as well. So they have their own users using their website. So we have two levels of users and a lot of data to go through. <clears throat> and one thing that we found out is that the users of their websites wanted two completely different things based off of one piece of data. What device were they on? Now remember, our clients sell insurance. That's all they do. They don't do anything else. They sell insurance. So if you're on a mobile device, I'm sorry, that's a little... Can you guys make out that that's a phone on the left and a desktop on the right? Okay. So they just want something different. And um, <clears throat> what I said to everybody was, let's just give it to them, right? Let's stop beating around the bush and trying to create one unified experience for everyone. And instead try and create some unique experiences for different people. And what I basically said is that you can't ignore data. 
You just can't do it. And there's no reason to. I mean, this idea that everybody who, if you want something on a mobile device, you're going to want it on a desktop just didn't apply to us specifically. And that might not be the case for everyone. But in this instance, it, it was very different. And what we found was is that people who were coming to our insurance-based websites on a phone, all they cared about was locations. What is your location? Which one's the closest to me? And what's their phone number? But when they were on a desktop, they had no interest in looking at your locations at that point. What they wanted to do was understand whether or not they can trust you. You offer the services they're looking for because they are not a customer. It was more likely that a mobile user was already a customer. So what did we do? Here's an example of one of our websites, fully responsive, WordPress-based theme. And on the left, you can see what it looks like on a laptop. It has uh, some nice photos of a family getting out of a car, saying how wonderful life is because they're insured and nothing can ever go wrong. And we have a form. But on the right, uh, it's our locations. But we did something cool. We actually used um, GPS in the phone to detect their location and then order the locations based off of um, proximity to where that person was standing at that moment. And the reason we did that was because we found that people were awfully frustrated because all they wanted to do was get to their location, get a form, get it signed, whatever it is that they need to do, and get in and get out. Um, and buying insurance is frustrating, it's annoying, and nobody wants to do it. So we are trying to make the experience easier on our client users. And we've had great success with this. Two completely different situations. Uh, we're using user agent detection. Uh, and what it does is basically decides if they're on a mobile device that we're going to show locations above everything else. Um, and what we did was we made some assumptions about phones. Now, I have probably um, going to be completely uh, uh, reamed out by uh, Ethan by making these assumptions because we learned this morning that I am no longer taking into effect the people in Africa and East Asia who don't have smartphones like us, but um, let's pretend for a moment that we're still talking about just the United States. Um, so it's safe to say that on a mobile device, it's probably using a modern browser of some kind. And by modern, I mean that we can do um, you know, certain things, we know certain things about the browser, we know it's gonna work a certain way. Things like knowing that it has JavaScript enabled is probably a pretty accurate assumption. It has GPS. I'm not talking about whether or not the client or the user wants to actually give you access to their GPS. I'm just saying we can get it. Um, they're on the move, possibly. And uh, Jason Pomentel gave a great talk at Future Web Design, or Future of Insights, and he said that there's no such thing as a, a mobile user. And they're right, in the sense that um, you're just a user, right? And you just happen to be on a device versus another type of device. But unless you are this guy, you're probably not sitting at home on your couch as often as somebody on a desktop or a laptop, right? So we can make the assumption that you're more mobile by being on a phone than you would be on a desktop. So with these assumptions, we can build an, a system like this. We can build an app like this. But then we wanted to take it a step further. So I'm going to show you a quick demo. What we did was we built a system what we call the uh, Multi-Line Center. And what we wanted to do, here's another website of ours. Um, we know that people want to get a quote, right? They, they're coming here for insurance of some type. Uh, we can make, click auto, and type in our zip code. Now, we wanted to start customizing their choices based off of what they were making, right? They made a decision to choose auto insurance. We know, based off of our data, that if you need car insurance, it's very likely that you need either homeowners or renters insurance. If you have a car, you likely have a home somewhere. You might live out of your car, but it's pretty rare. Um, and then you might need health insurance, you might need life insurance, you might need motorcycle insurance. But you know what? If you're buying auto insurance today, you probably don't need workers' compensation insurance or financial services for businesses. So we started changing this stuff up a little bit. And uh, you know you can go through this experience here. You can choose to add uh, road insurance, health insurance, and it has a nice user interface where things get blocked out. You can't use it. Uh, it fills it in, so it's a nice complete sentence. 
would you like to save by bundling umbrella ins health insurance with your auto insurance quote? Well, it's a nice experience, right? But the personalization really comes in when we start tying this into our CRM data, which allows us to start doing some really cool things where we can um, get locations, right? So if you're in California versus the East Coast, wouldn't you rather see earthquake insurance? You wouldn't want to see that here in Boston. When you do, you're really scared of earthquakes just wherever you are. But um, the point is, is that we can personalize the experience, right? And then you go on to the next page, and the Wi-Fi is going to all good. So now we can fill out the rest of this form, but here, check this out. Look at the bottom there. The three insurance types that I chose are now available for browsing. There's videos, there's content. I am now customizing the experience for the user by pulling in data based off of what they've chosen, customizing their experience. I am no longer requiring them to go click on three different links to learn about auto, home, or excuse me, umbrella and health. I'm bringing it to them. Well, wouldn't it be so much cooler if we could do that without them having to fill out a form? That we can use behavioral campaigns and other things to understand what it is that they want when they arrive at your site, start catering and customizing that website homepage. Wouldn't it be cool that when you get here to this part, that if you were looking for auto insurance, you'd see a picture of this loving couple sitting in the back of their car. Or if they wanted motorcycle insurance, you'd see a picture of somebody riding a motorcycle. Or if you wanted watercraft insurance, you see a family on a boat. Just helps to guide you through that process, right? And buying insurance is difficult and a pain in the ass, frankly. And our users, our clients' users, just want to get through as fast as possible. So the connection that you can make where you're personalizing the site makes it just one step further where you don't have to force them to hunt and peck and look around and all that stuff. Instead, you can actually create an experience where you get me, right? Like that site, it gets me. It knows what I wanted. It, it, it just understood. They must specialize in exactly what I wanted because that's the way it looks on their site. I'm definitely going to go with those guys. So these are things that we actually did. Um, oh, and the, the next thing I want to show you is a cool little thing. When we started getting into real time, um, we, we did another thing where, oh, this is a bit of a buffer. Well, we'll see. Um, I don't know if you guys uh, have ever heard of Steve Fisher, but he's uh, one of the great user experience designers um, in North America. He lives in Canada. But uh, what we did together, we, we paired up together and he created these interactive style tiles. So what it allows you to do is basically create a real responsive layout that helps people understand what you're trying to convey in their brand. But then we use WordPress and the customizer to allow for real-time upload of logos, um, color pickers, and as you can see, it's changing on the right-hand side in real time. And so now what we can actually do is create style tiles in line with our editors and build these things very quickly and then get these things out to our customers a lot faster. So you can see as he's typing in these words, they show up there. He can then um, upload an image and it'll appear there on the right hand side in a second. There it is. Uh, he can choose things like uh, changing the font. It goes right into Google Web Fonts. And then you can change all that stuff. Build out a design and a layout, not a layout, but rather a, a look and feel for a website in a matter of seconds using the real-time personalization in WordPress. This is completely free. You can go to interactivestyletiles.com if you want to use it. But it's also responsive. So now people can get an idea of what it's going to look like on a mobile device. See how this fonts will look, how it will look against different colors, things like that. So we, we take all these things that we've been working on, and we want to really take it to the next level. But the first thing we needed to do was really define what we mean by like a dynamic web. Um, and so you look at a tree like this, right? This is the website. And you have uh, your content. Earlier we made the reference to an apple and a banana. And we have two different people looking for two different things. But you can really create a dynamic web environment where you're serving that fruit to those individuals without them having to look through the tree. Right? They just arrive, and then it's there. And so we, what I did was I, I, I defined this as real-time dynamic change to a website's content using intuition to serve the user what they want before they've requested it, 
creating a genuinely unique experience for that specific user. And uh, you know, we get into, we can go, you know, keep going and going and going into this, um, but I'm going to start sharing some ideas that I have. And uh, one of the things that I love to use is GPS. I think GPS is going to be huge, especially for restaurants. Um, so you take an experience where someone's in Manhattan, right? Uh, they just got off the train, they're at a conference, and they don't know where to eat. They pull up their phone, that's probably the first thing they would do, right? They, they know that they're in the mood for Greek food. So they type that into Google, and on their phone, this is what they get. One of the locations is right near them. That's pretty cool. And here's their website. It's responsive. That was awesome. That wasn't planned at all or anything. Um, now, I've arrived at their website. What do I want to do? I, as a user of a mobile device looking at a restaurant website, I know what you're all thinking, right? We all want to do the same thing. We want to know what your menu is, and we want to know where you're located, right? That's pretty much it. That's all we really care about. You don't need to know that they have specials and all that other stuff. And if you do, if you want to know that, are you really going to hunt and peck around for it? You might, but wouldn't it be cool if like, it started coming to you? So my idea, and please bear with me, I haven't really designed anything in a long time, mostly marketing, creative, um, developer, but not much of a designer. So these mock-ups are not beautiful, but bear with me. Uh, imagine if it pulled up your location when you arrived at the site, pulled in a map, and showed you how close you were to that restaurant. All of a sudden, you're getting tied into this restaurant. You're getting more committed by the second to actually go to this restaurant. Now it's actually providing more information. This is a different example. You're nine minutes away. Come in for a free app. Now you have a time-based coupon. Urgency. You're creating it for them. Helping them to realize that they can actually get there very quickly and that you're actually providing some real value to them coming in. All right. This is taking another step further. You're only nine minutes away, and we have a 10-minute wait. Should we reserve you a table at 5 o'clock? Look what time it is on the phone. 13 minutes. Wouldn't that be nice? Like, you just know that you're going to spend the next 10 minutes walking there, and you're going to get in, and you're going to go in and sit right down. All you have to do is hit one button, fill out your name, and now, all of this stuff, what does it mean? It means that you're not looking for another restaurant, right? Even if the menu didn't really speak to you that much, that is just so freaking cool that you're not going to pass that up, right? At the very least, you just want to know if it's going to work. <laughs> so now, you click yes, you fill out the information, you take your 10-minute walk, and you're just so excited about getting there, right? And this is where dynamic web environments really can take hold for our users. So I define it again real quick. Using intuition to serve the user what they want before they've requested it. We knew what that person was coming to that website for, right? We knew that they wanted to learn about them, get an understanding of how close they are, whether or not it's convenient for them to show up, and should they go. Then we talked about some other tools, right? So we talked about GPS, and we talked about cookies. The funny thing about this is that I used JCPenney as an example the first time I gave uh, a version of this talk, and I was in Vegas. And uh, I pulled up their website, and I gave this whole example, and uh, right afterwards, the lead marketing um, I don't remember what his title, maybe director of marketing, for Jason Penny came up to me. He's, he was in the stands. And he, he came up to me and he goes, this is awesome, can we use it? I said, yes, that's the whole point. So anyways, so I've shopped at JC Penny before. And I've logged in before. I'm not currently logged in now, but I'm using the same machine. And I return to the site. Does this site look like it's made for me? Trust me, I don't wear sundresses and jewelry. And <laughs> I don't, I promise. But this, is, this website's made for my wife. She, uh, I guarantee you she's never logged in on my computer before or ever searched JCPenney or anything like that. So this profile is for me. Well, why is it serving with things for their, the majority of their customers? It, it's probably true that the majority of their customers are probably women between the ages of 25 and 45 or something like that. Well, why should, why should it focus on that for, for me? It knows enough about me. To me, this is like me meeting you today, right? After this, you're coming up, shaking my hand, thanking me for a great talk, because I know it's what you're all going to do. And then, me 10 minutes later, forgetting your name. Probably going to happen, and I'm sorry about that. But it's kind of rude, right? Like, it's, like, I've just met you. 
like we just had an interaction, right? We just had a pleasurable experience together, and now I come back and you don't even remember me. It's kind of like, like you're a jerk, like why? Right? And then, I, all right, so now I've gone through the website and I'm trying to find what it is that I'm looking for. Um, and I find a shirt, right? So for me, I'm a bigger guy, I have to find the big and tall section. And there's a ridiculously priced $55 shirt what you don't realize right off the bat is it's actually flame resistant. I'm not sure why. Um, I didn't notice it the first time I, I put this up there and then somebody pointed it out to me. And uh, it's good to know, I guess, in case some near a campfire or something. But the problem with this is that it took me seven freaking clicks to get to a t-shirt. It's like, what is going on? Like, I have to filter through all this crap and everything else. And, and then if I finally get around to buying this shirt, I know that the next time I come to JCPenney, it's going to be back to the sundresses and jewelry, right? Well, wouldn't it be cool with something as simple as a cookie that you can just track some basic things about me? So the next time I come to the site, it looks like this, right? More flame retardant shirts. <laughs> um, I don't know, like in case I'm running down the street, which I obviously don't run down the street. Um, you know, things like that. But the point is, this is a, this is a website that's made for me. Right? It's showing me the stuff that I'm going to purchase. And I'm sorry that my wife will have to wait a little bit longer for me to click through to buy her some jewelry or whatever. Um, although there is like this thing over here. But the point is, is that now we're customizing the experience for me. Making it nicer and better for me. So we know some sites do this, right? Amazon. Amazon does an okay job of this, I think. Where you buy a book and then Frankly, you don't even leave the site immediately after you buy your book. They already start showing you ideas for other books you can buy. And I'm really bad at promoting myself, and I didn't even put my own book up there. Terrible. My publisher will hate me. But the point is, is this, is that we're on the cusp. We're getting there. We're, we're already like doing some of this stuff, but we could be doing so much better. Um, take an example like this. Lowe's recently redesigned part of their site like the lower half with flat icons. And the upper half is still the gradients and all that crap. But it's nice at the lower half, right? But I was coming to this website right around the time that Superstorm Sandy was hitting. And did any of this stuff matter to me? Do I really care about buying a grill on a day like today? I don't, right? Why can't we pull in the weather API and your location? Holy crap, I don't need to show you grills, you're about to get flooded. <laughs> I'm really going to need that generator, and some batteries, and some other stock photo crap. Right? But the point is, this is that you're now creating a connection with that person. You're creating a user experience that no one else is doing. And you're creating a situation where I want to come back, because I want to know if you learn more about me. And we don't have to talk about stuff that, that, you know, that's personal, right? So like me having my, like, I don't know, some people might take offense to this, I personally wouldn't, but if JCPenney cookied that I'm a bigger guy and that I need plus size shirts, might offend some people, right? But does gender offend people? Like would it matter if it remembered that I was a guy versus a woman? Probably not, right? It wouldn't offend most people. And in situations like this, all you're doing is telling me that I'm within a 500 mile radius because the storm was so freaking big and I'm going to need some stuff like this. You're preparing me, you're teaching me, you're helping me. Right? You're making things work better. And um, that comes kind of to uh, you know, how we should be doing this. And this is one of my favorite all time quotes. If you haven't seen this quote before, um, it, it honestly changed a lot of the way I do things. And it's from you know, someone who's famous in literature has never even probably envisioned the idea of a digital device where you could touch it and move words and, and screens around. But the idea here is this is that it is so much easier to slap every single thing in there and try and make it work for everybody instead of just taking the time to understand what it is that individual people need. So what I would just say is just start focusing on providing value. Focus on what it is that you can give today using some of those basic tools and websites that we build every day, and what little things can you do to change your user experience? And now I'm not talking about 
you know, how fun it is to fill out a form that looks so pretty. I'm talking about like the little things that can be intuitive and change the way that people interact with your website. What we're doing now, if we adopt this stuff, is we're reducing the number of clicks, reduce, reducing the amount of aggravation, and we're creating just a more fluid, interactive experience. So, on the idea of more ideas, here's a few other things that I would like to see us start doing better. Um, terror alerts on media sites. Now, when we were tragically hit with the marathon bombings here in the city, um, you know, the Boston Globe and a lot of other area um, websites did a really great job of keeping us up to date on news elements. And um, the Boston PD had a Twitter account that was really helpful. But the, the thing I didn't really see is stuff like just a, a map. Don't go into this area. It is dangerous right now, right? Like if you were running on the on the uh, um, on the marathon, you may not have even known what was going on three miles ahead of you, right? But you might have checked your phone. I don't know. People do. I don't jog or run. So, but <laughs> the point is, is that um, we could have done we could have done different things. We could have done some things a little bit better. Um, and and especially in the world that we live in right now, it would be nice to know just by simply going to the website, using my location, help me understand if I'm heading towards danger. It doesn't have to be terror, it could be hurricanes, it could be natural disasters, it could be anything. Um, travel information. So, uh, coming to a website and I've purchased um, plane tickets from you. It's so aggravating that I buy a ticket from southwest.com and then I have to log in or type in my flight number to understand if my flight's on time. How is it you don't know what flight I'm taking? I mean, we, again, we had an interaction, we had an experience, and you're not just giving me that information. It's a shame. Uh, this is one of the things I think would be really helpful, especially when you're on site, right? So if you're in a hospital and you're on the hospital website, I guarantee you it's not so you can pay a bill, right? You, you're probably in the hospital because you're visiting somebody or you're there to pay a bill because you couldn't do it on the website because it's so frustrating. Well, wouldn't it be great if it could actually use things like Google Maps that uses uh, Google Maps' API for interior uh, layouts now has that stuff? where it can actually tell you where you are in the building and help you understand how to get to where you want to go and format the website that way. Like if I got to a website and I'm in the facility, it should know this via my GPS, it could say something more like, thank you for visiting, what are you trying to get done today? Who are you trying to visit? Are they in the maternity ward? Are they in the ICU? How can I help you get there? Wouldn't that be just such a better experience than rifling through links and links and links of 99% of that crap you're not even going to need at that moment? Remarketing. This is something that I am super passionate about. Um, the idea that you arrive at my website and don't convert, or maybe you converted and you didn't finish the process, or maybe I have more to sell you. The more I can learn about you and keep track about what you're doing, it's not about trying to sell you stuff. It's about providing an experience that's better for you, so that when you arrive the next time, I have things to show you. And it's like, you know, the service industry is so bad, especially in person. Remember in the 50s when you go, and, uh, I don't remember the 50s, but I remember seeing movies where in the 50s you go buy an ice cream cone and the guy had a nice hat on, an apron, a bow tie, and he was just so happy to see you, right? And then it's like now they're pissed off that you're interrupting their iPhone Facebook time and they're like, God, why are you here? Like, I have to serve you? It's a pain in the ass. And I'm just like, uh, sorry, I just wanted some ice cream, so I'm not jogging with those guys. Um, but, you know, we can start doing that with websites, right? Like, we can actually start doing that where we can say, like, just hand, give them a handshake, help them to understand that you've remembered them, and that you've benefited from their time on your website. The least I can do is just make it more pleasurable for you. Um, and then just remember, test, 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 and use data. Um, data is going to be your best friend with this stuff. Like I said earlier, when I was talking about locations and things like that, um, it only worked for us in that moment because we knew that our users wanted a different experience when they're on a phone than when they're on a desktop. So make sure you do this based off of your user data. Don't look at global data. Don't look at the fact that you know 70% of people who are on an Android device over an iPhone. It may not be the same for you. You know what I mean? Just focus on your data, even if it takes time. Build it out right and get it done. Thank you.